colleagues, my name is Mike Laugeter. I'm the corresponding author of the study entitled Preemptive Endoscopic Vacuum Therapy for Treatment of Anastomotic Ischemia After Esophageal Resection. This study was performed at the Department of General and Visceral Surgery at the University Hospital in Münster, Germany. In the name of my co-workers, Philipp Neumann, Rudolf Menningen, Daniel Palmes, Norbert Senninger and finally Thorsten Vowinkel, I'm pleased to give a short introduction into our topic. Following esophagectomy, anastomotic leakage occurs in 5 to 30 percent of all cases, with a reported mortality rate up to 20 to 50 percent. It represents one of the major complications following resections in the upper GI tract and remains a constant source of concern as well as an area of ongoing research. In the presence of an anastomotic leak, open surgical revision was once considered the only solution, but this approach has been challenged by less invasive endoscopic techniques such as stent placement and more recently endoscopic vacuum therapy, shortly called EVT. EVT is currently evolving as a first-line treatment option for anastomotic leakages following resections in the upper GI tract. Following esophagectomy, ischemia of the gastric conduit has been reported to occur in up to 10% of the patients. Together with an anastomotic leak, conduit ischemia accounts for a high rate of hospital death following esophagectomy and, to date, still represents the major nemesis of surgeons and patients following surgery. We believe that the early detection of ischemia is critical for the prevention of anastomotic leakage and severe necrosis since sufficient perfusion and oxygenation of the anastomotic tissue is the main factor influencing anastomotic healing. Due to the positive effects of EVT on mucosal perfusion, we have applied EVT for cases of mucosal ischemia at the anastomosis after esophageal resection before an esophageal leak has developed. In our current paper, we report about our initial experience of EVT in a patient cohort which had post-operatively compromised mucosal perfusion and an elevated risk of developing an insufficiency and a concomitant leakage following esophagectomy. We could achieve complete mucosal recovery in 75% of the patients presenting different degrees of anastomotic ischemia. We did not observe any EVT-associated complications. In contrast, EVT modulated mucosal perfusion even in severe cases of mucosal ischemia and prevented further damage such, such as conduit necrosis and severe anastomotic leakage. The use of EVT resulted finally in complete recovery in the majority of cases in our study. Anastomotic ischemia is a novel indication for EVT. Most specifically, early use of EVT in the presence of ischemia has the potential to prevent anastomotic leakage following esophagectomy if patients at risk are diagnosed in time. Risking a look into the future. Based on our observations and data, we think that EVT might have the potential as an interoperative procedure during esophagectomy for primary prophylaxis of post-operative anastomotic complications. We strongly support this idea and we believe that our results demonstrate the feasibility of early EVT for prophylaxis of anastomotic complications for anastomosis at risk of insufficiency. EVT is feasible, endoscopic vacuum therapy is safe and has the potential to modulate clinical outcomes and infection parameters in the presence of anastomotic ischemia following esophagectomy. 
Of course, further studies are needed to define the indications and the patients who most likely benefit from the early use of EVT. We think that this should be done in prospective randomized controlled trials. Finally, thank you very much for your interest and paying attention to this interesting topic. Enjoy reading our article Greetings from the Department of General and Visceral Surgery at the University Hospital of Münster in Germany. Goodbye.